Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, and you might know me from my own YouTube channel centered around strategy, management, and sim gaming. But today, I'm here in collaboration with Paradox to help you in surviving the aftermath. In today's video, with as few story spoilers as possible, we're talking about the endgame. How it starts, what it entails, and the new mechanics it brings to the table. With a freeform game like Surviving the Aftermath, you can often build your own challenge when coming up to the endgame. There are milestones that you might want to hit, maybe you want to play with over-the-top difficulty, maybe you just want to try and go a certain number of days without any deaths, but if you really want to survive the aftermath, the, the game kicks things up a notch. Relatively early on in your colony's life, you'll get presented with a new quest. Without giving too much away, it has you sending your specialists to locations around the world map to uncover details about a massive project that was being undertaken by generations past. At times, this will require relatively peaceful wandering, visiting points of interest on the world map with specialists of any class to learn more of what's come to pass. And at other times, you'll need to take out special bandit camps that might need more than one specialist to work together in order for them to come out unscathed. It doesn't take long for your colonists to realize the need for a bunker, a way to survive through all manner of calamities without needing to reassess life every time the temperature drops or when rocks start falling out of the sky. This construction will ask quite a bit of you, and though the numbers themselves might not seem like much, by this point in time, you will have used quite a bit of your readily available resources to build the basics and maintain them through the many days of survival. You'll likely need to research new resource gathering techniques, tapping into more power generation than before, and you'll need to rely on those trade partners in order to get resources that you can't source locally. Above all, however, you'll want to start recruiting specialists as often as possible. If you're not near your 10 specialist limit, start making your way towards it. This might cost silver, it might cost food, but you're going to need them soon enough. There are a few steps between the first phase of bunker construction and what we're about to talk about next, but like I said, we're going to try and keep spoilers to a minimum. There are, however, some major new systems you'll need to take into consideration shortly after said construction is done. Apart from the physical materials needed to build the bunker itself, there's a lot of lost knowledge that needs to be rediscovered to make it functional. Whether that knowledge is about life support systems, medicine, defense, or ecosystems, all are needed to make a sustainable doomsday bunker, and none are available easily. This is where the third type of world map character is introduced. Just like the Outpost Depot allowed you to convert specialists into settlers, the brand new Engineer Depot allows you to convert specialists into engineers, a new type of colonist who can build some unique buildings out on the world map. Much like the Outpost Depot, the specialist is consumed when converting them into an engineer. It's a permanent change and you won't be getting the specialist back. Unlike the Outpost Depot, however, the conversion takes the Engineer Depot with it. That's to say each engineer costs a specialist and an engineer depot. And looking at the cost of constructing an engineer depot, you can see how you might need to consider those advanced resource acquisition methods sooner rather than later. What's more, just like a settler, the engineer is also consumed by the establishment of an outpost. You will not get the engineer back, even if you demolish the outpost. And what's even more beyond that, each outpost only generates a marginal amount of knowledge needed per tick. So, you either need to be extremely patient and resilient, or you need to acquire a ton of specialists, collect a ton of resources, and build a ton of outposts. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Each outpost can only be built where you haven't already built another. This includes outposts that your settlers may have built to harvest science points or other resources from the world map. Fortunately, engineers spawn in vehicles, and they have greater movement distances, so you'll be able to cover more ground quickly. You'll want to select your engineer and pan around the map to look for these icons. They'll correspond with the four you see up here, and they reflect which type of outposts you'll be able to build within the sector. You can only build one in a sector, even if it has multiple types of knowledge to offer, so pick and choose wisely, and remember that you can always demolish one and replace it with another if you're in desperate need of the switch. Scout as far and as fast as you can with your other specialists, since you won't be able to spot or enter viable locations that haven't been scouted, and work quickly to establish these outposts. Make sure to keep at least some specialists on hand at all times, though. You never know when you'll need them. It will take much time, and it will cost many lives as you struggle through the calamities, the bandits, and worse. But in the end, that's the cost of surviving the aftermath. 